let me maybe give you a better explanation of what IDG is. My mom still thinks I work for AIG, so I'm like, mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, it's International Data Group, and, and if you take a step back, right, we've got a vertical ad network, which is where I sit. Uh, it's a collection of sites that aren't owned and operated by IDG. We simply focus on monetizing their ad space. We've got a traditional business of owned and operated publications, both online and print. We've got an events business, so if you've heard of the events, E3, Macworld, those are events that IDG owns and operates. We've also got a, a, a leading IT research firm called IDC, which is our sister company. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but just wanted to give everyone a perspective on what IDG, International Data Group, is, because most people don't know. So could, could we take it to a slightly deeper level of context? Give, give us some numbers, like audience, readers, consumers. 286 million technology buyers globally. Okay. And what percentage of that, let's say if that's at the top of the funnel of an audience, 286 million technology bottle, uh, buyers, let's go one step down to those that want to touch your media or consume IDG media. Uh, 110 million, I'd say. Okay. Uh, okay. Tough qu question to answer, but to, that's, that's where I'm we not, are. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm not trying to... To, to set you up here. Sure. Okay, so let's go down to the next funnel. So, because what I want to get at, that what I'm really interested in is, is how are you guys slicing your audience, right? Sure. How are you packaging and taking your product, which is basically eyeballs to mm -hmm. market, to serve the programmatic real-time buying stakeholders? So what's that next layer of granularity? So you have, let's call them readers, even though I know you guys are, uh, you know, you, you provide across multiple formats and pieces sure. of hardware, so you're a digital company. Yeah. Uh, but let's just call them readers for the sake of simplicity. Then how do you further, what's the next level of granularity? Or do you let that to the real-time buyer? Yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, get into more detail on how our exchange is structured. It's a little different than I think what most other publishers are doing in the space. So at the network, we've been very aggressive about our exchange platform. I think we were one of the early adopters of programmatic buying. It's gotten to the point where in display, we actually uh, don't do the tier one, tier two thing, right? So our, ex our, our private exchange buyers are able to compete with direct sold campaigns on the same priority based on a CPM basis. So we get a lot of questions around that. How do you make that work? It's crazy. We're in a unique spot as a network, not an individual publisher. Um, so we sell, our direct sales team focuses on those high touch relationships, rich media, which doesn't really apply here. We also sell on a channel basis, which opens up more overall availability. So that's how we've been able to structure that. And we've had a lot of traction, especially this year, in bringing in prioritized bidders, as we call them, to compete via the programmatic channel, actually with any of the direct sales on standardized media that we have. Okay, so I'm gonna, because um, for, most of us, I think, here are on the media buying side of it. So I'm gonna ask you to help me translate that so just maybe I understand it is when we talk about I mean how do you how do you slice that right like how do you I mean and that's what I, I guess what I'm asking is if you talk about channels if you talk about um, whether or not they're you know they're they're tech buyers per se like if I what audiences can I come if I come to you can you sell me basically sure uh, so in, in terms of how we structure the exchange, that's more about the inventory, the context. When you talk mm -hmm. about audiences, so we've recently launched uh, a first-party DMP mm -hmm. inside of IDG, which is really exciting. There's actually another press release about that today. As I mentioned, IDG has a lot of first-party data sources, both online and offline. Uh, it's crazy. We've got websites like CIO.com selling out at triple-digit CPMs. Up until this point, they've never done anything with their first-party data online. So it was a no-brainer to sort of venture into this area. The other cool part is we've got IDC, which as a research firm, I mean, these guys aren't sales guys. All they're doing is evaluating products and how businesses and consumers interact with those products. So they've given us a very robust first-party taxonomy in which to organize that data. So we, we've just released this product, but we're really excited about it. And then we're actually saying, here, here's our first-party data. Here's what we've got. These are folks that have visited our websites. They've gone to our events. You know, and, and, and we have a true understanding of the technology marketplace. Here's our taxonomy of 24,000 different data nodes to pick from. Layer that on our premium inventory, whether it be programmatically, whether it be, whether it be through traditional ad serving methods, whether it be in display or in video, and let's go from there. So that's sort of the offering yeah. around audiences and data. And I think, so the reason I just kind of set it up like that is because the common theme here is everybody has a lot of work to do oh, yeah. to enable this, right? And so that's why I wanted to get at all the heavy lifting that you guys are doing as far as innovating and building tools on the, you know, on the SSP side of things, mm -hmm. right, by integrating a DMP. Yep. I mean, you're driving an innovation agenda as a publisher, 
right? To, so how's that changed your business? Because that was the question we posed to Andy earlier, right? Yeah, it's 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 changing our business a lot. I mean, uh, to this point, really, the way we see it is context has been a proxy for audience. Now we're actually saying, hey, here's our audience. You're able to target these guys still in context. Content's important. I think we all know that. I don't think everything's shifting towards audience buying and the, the value of context is going to disappear. But it's a total change in dynamic. And we see the efficiency of RTB. We see the efficiency of programmatic buying. We want to make it as easy as possible for advertisers and marketers to access our inventory, which is why we're you know, investing and developing this area. So do you think that from a growth perspective, if you looked at what would have the greatest impact on revenue as far as sales growth. Is your hockey stick in leveraging data and analytics to, and I know, the, I know it's not apples to apples, I know it's not one or the other, it's not that clean, but is it in the using data and targeting and retargeting in your first party, the stuff that the IP you hold near and dear and is yours, or is it in the enablement and the technology uh, and integration of enabling the actual real-time buying and integration with the DMP into the trading desk and the exchanges and enabling private exchanges to, to actually function within your environment? I think you're in the middle of the hockey stick on programmatic buying and RTB and dealing with trading desks, right? So that's just starting start has started to take off over the past eight months. I think right now we're at the bottom of the hockey stick on the data front. So that's a whole new revenue source for us as a publisher. Uh, and we do expect it to be quite a large business. And it, does, it really doesn't exist right now for us as a revenue stream. But yeah, we, we expect a, a big hockey stick there over the course of the next two years. But so you get a, so um, I, part of that was a, f a failure on my part. I inferred because you were talking about three plus digits on CIO inventory, sure. which I'm assuming is a pretty big multiple. Yeah. Are you guys looking at monetizing your, your so the DMP allows you to monetize your first party data yep. outside of just the, the inventory placed in your ecosystem, right? Yeah, um, from the buying perspective, we're, we're trying to, to get some control around it at first. So is the majority of the inventory going to come from a CIO.com? No, their value is the data they're providing, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a couple of different businesses. We have a consumer group which sort of straddles the line. They bring a lot of valuable data to the table, but they also, to some extent, are an inventory source. And then we have our network, which is where predominantly where the inventory will actually come from, and you layer the first-party data mm -hmm. over that. So that's that's the way that it, that is structured. So you know, to answer your question, are we going to run a ton of volume, a data targeted volume on CIO.com? No, probably not. They sell the vast majority of their inventory to six major advertisers directly. Um, but are, are we going to use their their data in order to power new buys across our network? Absolutely. So to go back to um, what Brian was saying, sort of on behalf of what publishers are asking for and what their needs are, what. I mean, where's the balance? It sounds like it's a balancing act for you. Like, where do you throttle between, you know, what's the, what's the, the gas versus the break on driving this innovation agenda, monetizing your content and your first party data, and optimizing that revenue versus still being a, content, a publisher as a core value proposition? Because it seems like it's easy to get distracted. Yeah, the teams are, are, especially in our owned and operated properties, very separated. So, I mean, obviously ad sales has to work hand-in-hand -hand with content, but we, we tend to keep those guys focused on creating great content and guys like me to sort of manage our technology relationships. Uh, big challenges right now is fragmented marketplace. So, I think I work with five different platforms in order to monetize different screens and have different functionality in terms of, of, of monetizing our ad space. So. That's, that's the big, the core area of focus. Now, how do we consolidate this? We've got a video platform. We've got, uh, you know, a data platform. We've got a mobile platform. We've got a display ad server. We've got actually two display ad servers. So, you know, for me, that, that's very tough to juggle. It's tough to get insight cross-platform when you're working in a very fragmented fashion like that. So I think that's our focus over the course of the next year. Either is there someone that we partner with to sort of give us a unified view of everything that's going on, or is there some sort of consolidation which allows us to work through, uh, you know, less partners? Does your editorial staff have any... Uh authority or a voice in curating the advertising content? Uh, they definitely have a voice, uh, you know, at our own and operated properties. Um, you know, they, they definitely have say so. The number one goal is obviously to bring readers the most up-to-date and the most relevant uh, information around technology. And I think ad sales plays a second part to that. You know, that's, that's the core focus of our company. And we've been doing that for 50 years, and that's why we've been successful. So, yeah, they definitely have a voice, um, but it's, it's a balanced relationship. So before we sort of turn it over to questions, I just want 
I mean, this, we are talking specifically about online video, and I want to really understand, can you just take us through a little bit more detail specifically what you guys are doing in video? Because I know you're, I think you're doing yeah. some interesting things there. Yeah. So just video specifically. So we've got a direct sales team, obviously, that calls on agencies and, and, and works sometimes directly with brands that sells uh, both traditional 30, 15 second pre-roll, but also the inter interactive units, you know, sort of high touch relationship. Um, uh, what, was it, what was the word you used for? Uh, Human? No, you, you have a word for... Uh, you know, it's, it's like you make the, the suits are bespoke. Are bespoke. I love that word. <laughs> so I'm going to bring that one back. Uh, but yeah, so we have. I mean, that's where our direct sales team is focused because we have the belief that order uh, that over the next you know few years, standardized media is going to become more automated. So that's where uh, the team that I manage on our exchange works, talking to agency trading desks, DSPs, both in video and display, and now you know working in mobile, uh, sort of that automated trading on anything that's scalable and is standardized. Um, when, when we're staffing out a team there, I think a lot of publishers haven't done that yet. And there's a little bit of a fear factor, and they don't really understand what's going on in this whole ad tech space. I'm actually going up to uh, present to our company uh, at, a, at a global event next week, and I've got the Lumiscape ready to go up, and I think <laughs> these people, their heads are going to spin off, right? Traditional publishers, they don't really know what's going on. So, uh, you know, that, that's a challenge, but, uh, you know, that's, that, that's the way we, we've sort of separated, separated our company on the sales front.